In one of his videos, 3Blue1 Brown showed an interesting way to compute pi by counting the number of times small block collides when a bigger block is launched towards it. To simulate the situation, he used very specific formulas, which he explained in his third video. But I wondered, is it possible to recreate the similar effect just by using Unity game engine's built-in physics? I have a small block, a big block, and I'm about to launch the big block into the small one in 3, 2, 1, go! Oops, that didn't go as planned. So it will not work out of the box, but I will make it work, and that is what I'll show you in this video. First I'm creating a plain white sprite, which I'm going to use for just about everything. I drag and drop it to create a floor, position and scale appropriately, then copy to create a wall, add box colliders to both of them, and do a bit of experimenting with colors. Then I use the same sprite to create a block. Duplicate it to make the second one. Scale and position both of them to the bottom of the floor. Move the cam to capture the action. Add box colliders to both blocks, but also importantly add rigid bodies so they are affected by physics and are not just static shapes. Rename them for clarity and, just in case, set the collision detection mode to continuous. Then create manager, which is going to contain most of our codes. I'll explain later why I've attached it to small box specifically. I declare a public field for big box's rigid body and immediately use it to set its velocity to the negative of the initial speed, for which I'm going to need public field as well. The reason I use negative of the initial speed is to make it move left and not right. Assign big box's rigid body, set the initial speed, and it's ready to go. Oops, that's not what I wanted. The reason it happens is because the initial speed is too low. Let's set it to 50. Just joking, the actual reason it happens is because of friction the default physics material has. To get rid of the friction, we need to create a custom physics material, set its friction to zero and assign it to boxes rigid bodies. That's because the default bounciness of the physics material is zero. Fix it. This is going in the direction we wanted, but not quite yet. Bye! Also, is it just me or is this border looking kinda thick? I make it thinner and make blocks of equal sizes. Cool, that is the first thing that actually worked as expected. But it's not very interesting with equal masses. Let's set the mass of the right block to 100. This starts to resemble 3 blue and brown's video, but it's not quite clear without the collision count, so let's create some UI for that. I create text mesh pro text element, position it, set UI scale mode to scale with screen size to make it resolution independent, then I duplicate it to show pi estimation based on the number of collisions. Then I create one more text element as a child of the box to show its mass. I set its width and height as 1 to make it scale with the box, and its Z position to minus 5 to make it appear in front of the box. I enable font auto size to accommodate for different masses, and it works great! Adding B tag makes some part of the text bold, just like in HTML. Duplicate it for the second box. Now it's time to update manager script. I declare fields for small box mass and big box mass so I can change their masses on just one component instead of switching between objects to change their corresponding masses. I then declare references to four UI elements, which we will all need. Now to the most important part of the experiment, collision count. I create a field for a collision count which starts with zero, and then add a function which Unity executes every time a collision occurs on collision enter 2D. This function is the only reason I put the script on the small box, because that is the object for which we want to count the number of collisions. Its main line is very simple, it is just increasing collision count by one. 
Update UI simply updates collision text and pi estimation with their current values. You get pi estimation from collision count by using a formula never directly shown in 3 blue one Brown's video, but which is pretty easy to deduce from there. Because I want to control both masses from a single script, I need to add a couple of lines to do that. And just for convenience purposes, let's show masses in the boxes, using the text elements I've created earlier in the editor. Now drag and drop component references, set box masses, and the experiment is ready to go. Cool! It is very close to E, which is approximately 2.718. Except that it was supposed to be pi. If you paid really close attention, you might have noticed that in the previous experiment the collision count already started with 1 for some reason, and this reason is that it counted the collision with floor at the very beginning. To prevent this from happening, let's create a new tag floor, set floor is tag to floor, and update our script to check if the object we collided with has tag floor. Collision count starts with 0, which means it worked, and it's time for some bigger experiment with moss set to 10,000. <laughs> it just clipped through the left. The wall is pretty thin, which means its collider is thin as well, but we can fix it by creating an invisible wall, which is going to be much thicker. <laughs> well, it doesn't clip through the left anymore, at least. Let's go to Physics 2D tab in the project settings and try to increase velocity and position iterations. No change. Let's try to increase it even more. Still no change. You'd ask me, what do position and velocity iterations values even do? And I'd answer, it seems there is a consensus on the internet that no one actually knows. The bigger values are supposed to make this extension more precise, and in another experiment for one of my future videos, changing these values makes a big difference. But for this experiment, it seems like they change absolutely nothing. The setting which is much clearer though is fixed time step. It dictates how often physics engine step is going to be executed. The default value of 0.02 means that the physics step is going to be executed every 20 milliseconds or 50 frames per second. Decreasing this value tenfold means physics steps are going to be executed 10 times as often, or 500 times per second, or just every 2 milliseconds. Will it make a difference in our case? Let's test. Bye bye. See you later. Decreasing fixed time step actually helped. For the first time we get the correct number of collisions and decent approximation of pi. C sharp has an annoying property of behaving differently on different PCs, even when not specifically asked. My Windows language is German and that is why I get 3,1 instead of 3.1. This can be fixed by manually supplying culture info or format info. Ciao. I'm trying to decrease fixed time step tenfold once again, but it doesn't work because I've reached the minimum value. Choose. Adios. Let's try with a smaller mass. Leap wohl. Okay, it works with 300, but we didn't come too far. But there is a setting that will change everything. Let's freeze the rotation of block rigid bodies. 1000 kilograms? Works! 10,000 kilograms? Works! 1 million kilograms? Well, not yet. Freeze rotation was not enough. But still, with a mass of 10,000 kilograms, I succeeded in correctly measuring pi up to two decimal digits. I'll end this video here. In the next part, I'll show you how to make it work for mass ratios of 1 million and much more. I also have a lot of cool stuff planned, such as clothes, masonry, bridges, and much more. 
subscribe not to miss it and click the bell if you want to always get notified about my new videos and not rely on YouTube's algorithm. Like the video if you liked it, let me know what you think in the comments, which by the way I actually read and reply to, and check out this video in which I've made a complete maze game from scratch in just eight and a half minutes. Bye!